Yo, ladies and gents, and welcome along to episode number three. Right, um, I'm just going to go into the call now. Um, got to phone everybody up, get things going. Here we go. Here's the call going. Hello. Hello. Evening, evening. Now we've got Joe in. Sound check for Joe. Gringo. Oh, Gringo's posted missing. Chris, what about you? Give me you two right? seconds. Yeah, mate, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, perfect, mate, perfect. Um, we're just waiting on Aaron joining the call. Um, how's the sound trips on the, on the call? In terms of coming through on the... Because I know the first one was terrible. And obviously, the second one was people were saying there was an echo. Oh, this is going well, boys. Hello. Uh -huh. I'm here. My mic was off. off. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Hi. I can't hear an echo. But... Right, okay. Uh, it's sounding, it sounds fine to me. Everything sounds good to me. But I don't know what it's like on the, on the actual stream. Uh, there's a little echo on Chrissy and Joe. A wee bit of an echo. Right, okay. Um, I think it's because people's on phones and stuff. Um, I need to do an echo test. Right, Joe will have his camera on soon. Unfortunately, I don't have a camera for Chrissy. Um, and if we got to send me a picture to put in the box, but we'll get, um, we'll get Joe's downstairs down. eating his spag bowl, everyone. Aye, basically. Right, um, we went through the agenda, um, with Chrissy just a couple of minutes ago. Um, but tonight's agenda, just to let you know, is part one is the differences of World Cups kind of back in the day compared to now. So, obviously, like, because we've got, um, We've got Chrissy here, and um, we have a bit of a historic, historical rivalry with Scotland and England um, before before Joe or Aaron came about in the scene when they were wee FIFA babies. Um, <laughs> for part two, it's how difficult is it to win a World Cup, basically, um, whether, whether it's back in the day or even now. And obviously, we've got Joe here and Chrissy here and myself that have, that have experienced either A, trying to win them, or B, winning them. Uh, part three is... Uh, as a World Cup squad overview, talks on the groups, etc., etc., um, which is like quite heavily orientated around Aaron. And then part three, um, Aaron will go over some stuff that's been happening on VFL, um, like the transfer windows, any news that he's got or anything, just for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's been a nightmare so, the last hour, by the way. Aye, I guess it probably has been, aye. Um, right, Chrissy, I'm just fixing your shit on this sweet thing. So, I so I'll introduce. Obviously, I'll give Aaron um, the the first word. He's the he's kind of main guy, VFL guy. So, if just as Joe there popped up. If you're saying you what I saying, come in, me Aaron, just know <laughs> where I sort this shit out. Uh, yeah. So, um, the whole the whole concept for this is uh, when when Andy kind of said to us, well, you know, let's let's have like a schedule list of how we're going to sort these podcasts out to space out the content. I recommend the World Cup because I think for a lot of people that are in the kind of like 11 scene now, or maybe not in the 11 scene, they're just in the kind of like the scene in between where they're just only playing VFL. They don't really know the differences between what World Cups were like back in 2011, 2012 compared to what, they, what they're like now on VFL. Because I think everyone's got kind of like a, a, a preconceived <coughs> concept or understanding or view of the World Cup. Um, now nowadays in the last maybe two three years compared to what it used to be like because there's a lot of there's been a lot of debates and a lot of arguments on vfl over the last couple um for example a lot of the guys that are vfl core here know that the, the last england manager i picked was a relatively unknown manager and you know that may have not happened you know back in back in andy's day or chrissy's day where these kind of guys that are not so much known um but have been around for a long time get a chance and Again, I caught a lot of flack for that from a lot of some of the bigger players because, in their view, it should only be the best of the best playing the World Cup. Whereas I like to kind of vary up, switch it up, and have one World Cup where it's like that, another World Cup where guys who have been around for a long time and won't really ever get a chance get a chance. And then, of course, we all know if you're a VFL guy how the England World Cup turned out last time, where the unknown squad pretty much had a couple of dashes of quality around got guys into the team that weren't really ever in the international setup and then they won the whole thing. And now some of those guys in the team that are the lesser knowns are in bigger teams than what they were before. So 
kind of like a, con- a compare and contrast about kind of opportunities and opportunity factors in World Cup back then compared to, uh, you know, compared to now and, and that kind of stuff. And then, of course, having people like Joe, who has really kind of prospered in the VFL World Cup scene. I don't know how many World Cups he's won. We'll just say a shitload. And then you've got Chrissy and Andy that have kind of been... Uh, hello. Uh, that I've kind of been there with their, uh, with you know, with their their multiple World Cups back in the day. It's just nice to kind of get a, a conversation going about what it's what it's like and if there is a quote unquote better um, system in terms of back then it was better or, or nowadays it's better. And just get like a kind of debate going there. And then, like Andy said, round off with a bit of transfer news because transfer window open on VFL about an hour and a bit ago, which has been an absolute nightmare so far with people trying to get deals through. So, yeah. Cover about that, and um, I've got, yeah, be really, I've got an be absolute really interesting one. to start with, by the way. I've got an absolute belter to start with, which I'm sure Chrissy will remember, but back on FEPA, the manager was regarded as garbage um, for England, so he didn't actually play, he just <laughs> picked the team. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so FEPA, I, 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 want to hear about, I want to hear from Chrissy about that, because Chrissy was quite heavily involved in a team called As- Athletico Pants, Um <laughs> Obviously, it was a double S, um, a slightly cool pants, and the manager was FEPA Mark. He ran the site along with FEPA Kelly, and there used to be a big joke amongst all the other international teams about how the manager never actually played, and the predominance of the team was for a slightly cool pants. So I'm just wondering what, I'm just wondering what Chris's take on it is because I've never actually spoke to him in any depth for length about it and what he thought about it at the time, or what he thinks about it now. So are you, if you're there, Chrissy, if you want to jump in on that. Yeah, I mean, it was quite interesting, <laughs> uh, to be fair. Because, first of all, I think a lot of the better players didn't really respect him with any sort of regard because, obviously, he didn't play. And when he did play, obviously, it, wasn't, it was sort of clear that he wasn't sort of a competitive player or what have you. So there are a few people, mainly from Forgan, actually, um, that had problems or they weren't allowed in the side so obviously as you as you'll know uh, company 33 who uh, who I've played with a lot uh, he was he was completely banned straight away from the team just because um well as you could probably remember he put a lot of uh, shall we say his own propaganda on the site about about his uh, his quality or what have you um so obviously first first and foremost he wasn't very happy with him so he never really managed to uh, to get in the side. Uh, mere formality again. Um, at the time, Forgon were obviously going for uh, for number one in the world. Yeah. But um, but Mere, Mere also, I think he I think he played a couple of games and then he was shortly um, axed from the side as well. So and then it sort of became I don't know really. You sort of had to be agreeable with Mark. It was almost like um, I don't I don't know whether what sort of manager to compare him to in real life, but it was almost like you had to agree with the manager who was sort of stamping his authority on the side and then picking players that probably would not give him as much hassle as he wanted rather than actually on their on the, their actual quality. So, so yeah, yeah, I think that was pretty much what it was. Obviously, um, painting a picture on, on mere formality and, and Company 33, they were among like the two, two of the, the, the kind of best players on the scene. Um, when you say there was that, like, there's always been a conglomerate of players that have been regarded as like top tier. These are, these are top tier that other people look up to. Um, and obviously, at the time, I mean, I, I just came about 11 man at that time. And they two, they, they like Forgon was one of the kind of they were like one of the creme de la creme teams, and they two were like the absolute forefront of that team, um, and very very for clubs, very very big personalities. Um, so I mean to just bomb them out the team as well would have been quite a surprising thing to everybody. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think I think it's surprising in the sense that obviously when you um, when you were putting together the best sort of eleven players that could play for England. Like, there'd be no doubt that them two would be in it. But I don't think it was surprising in the sense of the way that Mark approached everything and the way that they approach things on the site as well because they're forever getting in arguments and and all of that sort of stuff. So it didn't surprise that they were sort of axed from the team. Um, I think he made, um, he made Gazabian captain, who was obviously the manager of Atletico Pants. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but he was also a mod on the site and he was someone he got on really well with so I think that's where the majority of Atletico Pants players sort of got in 
Um, it weren't bad players either, to be fair. It was just uh, it was just more a few of the better players who at that time also had egos were um, were sort of were sort of axed and not really allowed in, not even given a second sort of mention or what have you. Do you think uh, the question on that? Like, do you think that that kind of like back in the day, you reckon that was kind of the the correct way to do it? Like, when you look at like kind of the, like the history of that national team. Do you think that could have won more if it if it opened up its kind of like borders more to people? Or you reckon that kind of went about it the right way though? Um, I think well, I that's the difference between now and then. I think that's the biggest one for me. But sorry, Karen. I suppose Mark. For, I can understand why Mark did it because obviously he wasn't a um, he wasn't a player. He wasn't a competitive player. So mm-hmm. he wanted people that were going to respect him, and I think there wasn't much respect from a few of the top players for him because of that. Um, obviously, on that, I mean, we're talking FIFA 11. I think on FIFA 12 or FIFA 13, um, when it went over to FPC, and Andy ran a an international tournament. Mir was actually the uh, the captain of England, and we won it. Um, on FVPA, I think we got to the quarter or the semi finals, and um, and we went out. So I think the main thing for me, really, in answer to your question, was. Mark shouldn't have been the manager in the first place. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't see how. If you, if the object for England was to win a trophy, then why is someone that's not playing the one that's picking the team? Do you, yeah. do you, I don't know if that makes any the sense. Thing, yeah, I, I, get, I get you. I get the you. other I thing is, the case, well, by the way, is that that England team wasn't successful by any stretch of the imagination for the player pool. Player pool wise, mm-hmm. you had players. I mean, you had back then. You had like. The, the, the best three teams on the game were Divine, Wonder Kids and um Forgon by a by a considerable stretch and then like Atletico Pants and that uh, Magical were good teams but they three teams were predominantly the best teams and you never had any Wonder Kids or Forgon players or Divine players mm-hmm. in that team. And yeah, that that's team. it. And Lewis wasn't in there either, was he? No, uh, Lewis H. No, Lewis Irons. I mean I mean Irons was categorically the best cam I'd ever seen for years. Like it was just like he, even to this day, he I reckon like if you put him up against other people in terms of that standard, they he was at then, he would still stand out like a sore thumb. Well, I think that's it. I mean, I think you could have put mere formality and Lewis up front and Irons Cam, and we ended up with I think it was Presty and Magical Nath up front with Mikey Cam or something. Which, by the way, they they weren't bad players either, but the three that I mentioned former were. Like undoubtedly, the one of, if not the best players in their position at the time. So, well, that's it as well. Because I mean, there's a big. I remember when Lewis Lewis took the sabbatical. As he does, he goes on. He does his um, FM thing, as you know, and he vanishes for like a whole year and stuff. Um, and obviously now with the pro FIFA player thing as well, he's, he's completely vanished after scene. But he's still there streaming and stuff. But he's just not on the club scene uh, this year. But he he vanished for. He vanished for FIFA 14, I'm going to say. 14, maybe 13. Wonder Kids vanished and then reappeared on 18. No, they reappeared on 17, sorry. And I, I was saying to people about Lewis, I was saying how good this guy was. And I'm sure Joe would be able to verify this, but, but everybody was turning and saying, this guy's fucking terrible, this guy's fucking shite. Like, <laughs> is this, the, this was one of the best players back in the day. Next thing you know, six, seven months down the line, the guy's fucking absolute running the show. The one in every fucking tournament on 18. Like, I think they run something like five in a row. Completely dominated the 11th scene on 18. As you well know, because you ended up in their team as well. Um, so, and people basically slept on him because because he came back rusty as shit. And that's what happens to a lot of guys that, that go away and come back. They're no, they're not at the same level because they're not playing FIFA every day, but... But he was, he's one of the guys I put down in the Dilskin category, a very, very special player, somebody that just knows the, the, the kind of quirks of the game, knows the, knows how to to break the mechanics. Like, even hey, nah, he's got a football brain as well. Yeah, aye, exactly. I was just getting to that. Aye. So sorry I interrupted yeah. you there, Chris. I know you were in. But, no, no, obviously Lewis is one of, if not the best player that I've played with. Like, he's incredible. Not, I think the thing with Lewis is that uh, he can pretty much play any position. So, like, even, even if he is trying to get back into into the game, sort of going forward, because I do appreciate if you're an attacker and you take quite a while out, it's a lot different for, for example, when I take time out and I'm a defender. I feel like even though there's slight difference, differences, like, defending is still pretty much the same. 
Like people are still going to try and do the same balls over the top, still going to try and do the same moves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a lot about positioning and awareness. Obviously, when you're attacking, um, it's a lot more about sort of the meta and what works and what doesn't and what have you. So I can understand why Lewis took a few more months to get back into the game, but yeah, undoubtedly, once he gets used to it, he's just unplayable. I mean, if you remember, Forgone did make a brief appearance and because they weren't able to put the time into it. When they did come back, they just fell away again. They disappeared. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think Forgone's quite a, a sorry story, really, because I don't think anyone would remember him now. Like, a lot of people associate Forgone with me. Uh, Forgone is not in any stretch of the imagination my team. Like, it was always mere formalities. And when he was running it back in the day, they were always first in the world, arguably the best team on the game. Um, and then obviously he stopped playing and me and company, company 33, uh, decided that we were going to start trying to bring it back and what have you. And we had we had a good run on FIFA 12, but it, we put a different spin on it. So it wasn't, it was always about still obviously being one of the best on the game, but it was more about playing good football, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it was a bit of a different spin on it, but to do that, it meant that we couldn't... I don't know, you had to take a few beatings to be able to learn how we wanted to play. Um, so, uh, yeah, so yeah, it was a, it was a bit different. Off. And I think, especially <laughs> towards the end, um, Forgon was just known as an absolute shit show, for yeah, <laughs> one yeah, of the yeah. better phrase. It was run by a guy called Orlandis, and... Honestly, like he's he wasn't even any part of Forgon. I don't even know what was happening there. Like even there was even one time where he uh, he put on Twitter, he put a he created a Forgon handle and was like we're recruiting for players, and I had to message him and said no you're not. Like <laughs> who are you? Why why are you even recruiting for players? It's not even your club. So, so yeah. Yeah, off topic away from the World Cup, did that used to happen back in the day when you were all like? actively playing in 11 and 12 a lot of people like if your clubs weren't inactive for like about i don't know like months or whatever you'd have people try and like carry it on so like for example if that makes no sense like if andy back in like 2011 said okay i'm not doing unity for six months someone would try and come up and like pick up unity and say oh okay unity are there recruiting like was that like a regular thing was that just like a kind of weird thing to happen i mean to be fair like back in the day um, we were all quite active anyway, so there wasn't much of a chance of that happening. I think uh, the, the problem for us was that as soon as you got the game, you had to secure the name quick because someone would try and steal it. Mm. Mate, like, I, need, I, I need your help, boys. How the fuck do I add something to this call? Because I've was i got a big screen with Joe on it. I kind of get Joe off the screen. Give me, tell me add me and I'll get Yeah, I'm there you go. I've dropped his details in. While the boomers here get that sorted, I have another question for you, Chrissy, and, and even Andy as well, if, he, if he's if he's going to multitask. Yeah. Like compared to compared to now, right, or recent times, should I say? Uh, what what is like? What was what were the international like foreigners like back in eleven and twelve? Like the French and the Spanish, because like now in the VFL World Cups, you've got the guys like. Arujo and Polga and stuff playing for France and they play this smooth carpet football and they 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 not want to work up on VFL yet. But they, so they always, always play, play the most, the, the, the nicest, nicest, purest football, football regardless of, of FIFA. Can I come in first yeah. and bring Chrissy into this, right? Yeah, what you guys don't know, and the reason, like, what I actually tried to do was the original person I tried to go on here was James Ryan, who's going to join the call. My second person was was, was Chrissy. Um, the reason being is because I didn't think, um, I, did, I initially didn't think Chrissy would do it, but these two guys were the guys that I brought in to run, run IF. PC. So FPC mm. forums was obviously the main biggest um, competitive forum anybody's ever seen. It was fucking massive. It was like 10,000 members, 100 plus British teams. It was a joke. Um, so we just basically took over the whole international scene and they two boys went and got something like, I don't know, it was 30 plus international teams for around the world. Um, so so Chrissy had went and like made all these contacts for everywhere, um, him and James Ryan. Um, done all the work on it, done all the background, and then held like a European Championship and a World Cup. So um, so I, I wanted to bring him in on that as well. Um, mm -hmm. But to answer your question, no, they didn't play carpet football back in the day, no. They didn't. That was they very much like fucking football. tournament football then, was it? Yeah, sweaty, yeah. sweaty football. Mm -hmm. like the, the, even the Spanish, the Spanish, but the Spanish weren't even that good. They were terrible. Um, pretty much the, the, the team was dominated by Scotland and Ireland. 
That that was yeah. the two teams that dominated the scene. It was Scotland and Ireland. I, I ran Scotland, and um, who ran Ireland? Um, Kyle, Kyle the Great ran Ireland, um, and and the rest of them were never to be seen because England was always full of arguments and stuff, which I'm sure I'll bring again, Chris, if you want to jump in. Yeah, yeah, no, it was um, well, England was just sort of all over the place until we had that we had that one win um, with uh, with mere formality. When he was managing, and that was when we did the uh, the IFPC. I can't remember what we even called it. It wasn't the World Cup, uh, but we called it something. Uh, it was I, uh, it was IFPC and uh, international. The Cup of Nations. A Cup of Nations. That's where it was. Well played. Uh, Can yeah. you remember the remember the the graphic? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, no, I think that was the only thing we ever won with England, which was ridiculous considering the as you say the amount of. The amount of good players that we had at the helm, like there was even good players playing for like Wales and what have you, because they knew they weren't going to get in the England side, and the the like Nan's dog's cat was Welsh, so they. No, oh, yeah, that's still the case here as well, man. Don't worry, we have yeah. a fucking we have a guy every fucking season, you know. Oh, my fucking my granddad, he's Scottish, I swear, can't fucking prove it, can't show anything. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, Scotland trust me, I sound like I'm from, I sound cocky. I sound cocky as shit. I live in a fucking. I live in East London, but trust me, he, he fucking loves haggis, and he's definitely Scottish. Yeah, Get that all over here as well, man. It's terrible. Well, the thing that I was going to say as well about the uh, about the like the the French and the Spanish and stuff. Why I'm so interested in it is not only because of how they play um, now with uh, with like the VFL World Cups and how they uh, they bring that style of football to it, but it's more the fact that like. I don't know if like the French and the Spanish international pool back when you were doing your Cup of Nations stuff was like bigger back then or or smaller back then because it seems now like when I go to a, a Rujo for a VFL World Cup and I say you want to do France and he goes yeah he has like sixty people like instantly there like ready to go like I have no idea if it was as big back then or if it was just kind of still in its infancy or not. Yeah, I mean to be fair, I'm not massively sure on how they recruited the players either. I think there was. There was a lot of, from the foreign teams, you'd sort of see like a lot of names that you'd come up with just as you were coming up with them in your normal teams. It'd almost be like two French teams that you used to see play together like Golden and like someone else, Progen. And you'd just see their teams like mixed together or something. Same with the Spanish, it'd be like Energy and Hispanicos. And you'd just see those, um, you'd see the same players all the time. But I don't know... In terms of the actual selection well, process, remember, how much of all the, the players they had. For Portugal, um, we found out after about two months, three months, that it was literally all, all France. It was, all, it was basically <laughs> all French players. If you remember, it was all French players. Um, and they also had Senegal as well. And they were all French players. So basically, about the because France had such a big player pool, but they just used to pick for the best two or three teams. Um, so then they went and they, they went and just made the other teams. like, And we couldn't prove, like, Somebody was Portuguese or French or, or Spanish. We just we just we were just taking it as red that they were. But I mean, I think, like, as, um, I think as well, obviously, at that point when we were just starting out, uh, any any more uh, nations that we could get, the better. I think so. We probably weren't too uh, too strict on the um, on letting people in either, because I think it was just every time there was a new nation and we managed to get in. As long as the tournament went on, I don't think people really mattered too much. We went. Um, we bet, to be fair, we were really strict on the home nations, but we weren't strict on the other the nations outside our kind of remit. Yeah. Um, I don't know yeah, you, are you there, JR? Are you back yeah. come on any of this? Can anyone hear me? Yes. We yeah, can. I can hear you. Yeah, mate. Sick. Sorry, I was trying to fucking... I was having a mail. I'm on my phone. I don't know how bad it is. Is it, does it sound shit? It's fine, it's fine. It's just saying... Nice, yes. I'll be honest, I'm kind of catching up now, so I'm not really sure what everyone was speaking about. I kind of caught the start where Chrissy was talking about um, Stalin Mark on the sidelines, but... Yeah. Stalin Mark. Yeah, that's about where I'm at at the minute. Uh, right, okay, so just a quick synopsis for you. The, we, were just, we, we, we ran into IFPC, you and him running it and going and collecting all the nations. Um, oh, and Aaron was asking if um, the French, who are quite good at playing carpet football now, if they played carpet football back then, to which I said vehemently, no, they did not. They yeah, did but not. they played, but they didn't, they weren't really at the level that sort of everyone else was like they played okay stuff like you had Rodinia who obviously was like the best player but the rest of them it was kind of you'd expect to beat them if you didn't you'd be very upset yeah it's a bit embarrassing because a lot of the foreign teams turn a lot of batterings back in the day 
But even a lot of the German teams that I'm playing with now, like even them German teams that I used to go and play in back in the day, like, you wouldn't even... Like, I used to get laughed at for going to play with them. Now they're like seen as like superstars and stuff. We had uh, just football, didn't you? Who yeah. uh, you'd play all the time, and they were they were easy points back in the day. No, yeah. no offense to any of them, no because playing, playing nowadays the they're uh, like I know people like Gizmo, for example, that that plays now, like quality player. Yeah. Well, the only yeah. team, the only team back in the day that was good that was a German team was Team Magic. Yeah. Have you yeah. That? Even that. them guys. Like, you saw yeah, they had, they had they had TM Sunny. Uh, Sonny was just incredible, but he used to play for a, a Dutch team on not a Dutch team, a um, a German team on FIFA 10, who were like top 10 in the world. I can't remember what the name was. It was one touch. Is it was one yeah, touch? Maybe. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one yeah they had a few balls in that team. Well, I folded uh, Team Magic because I went and signed up for the best players. Chilling <laughs> <laughs> in the scene, Andy. Season. Well done. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. well, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the scene was massive back then, so it didn't like, people were taking people's players all the time. And you know, there was something on. that I was kind of picking up on just like when I was just coming in. You know, we're talking about sort of World Cups and stuff like that. I think people forget though as well, like back in the day, like we used to have tournaments, but it wasn't the main thing. Like realistically, we was all going for that leaderboard, like yeah. overall, because yeah. it was quite impossible to do a World Cup because we wouldn't class a World Cup if we couldn't play the South Americans. So it was kind of, nah, you had to play your individual yeah. ones, but... We'd done European Championships and Cup of Nations and then yeah. you, you couldn't, everybody bitched about playing the Americans and the Hondurans and... Because even even right. even the I think the Euros that we won, we had to wait nearly like four months to play, which we called the Atlantic Cup, because obviously the South Americans won their one, and we had to play USA. And even then, it was such bad lag that people just didn't really care. Like you won, but and you had a nice medal. But the world ranking little table they used to have on IFPPA, that was the one. Like that was the daddy. Like Scotland and Ireland used to have a really good rivalry on that. Aye, aye, we battled it out for him. But it's quite a, quite a good point you make about the actual, the EA world ranking was that um, back then as well, because cause back on FIFA FIFA 10, 11 um, and, and 12 up until I opened up FPC, you were having four yeah. tournaments a year. One of them was a yeah, World yeah, Cup. Yeah. You, you, were, you were literally, that was it. And, and the tournaments were, were, were 16 teams. Like they weren't mm. even opening up the tournament to thirty two teams. There were only like sixteen teams, and it was like it was kind of almost like like an exclusive clubhouse because Unity weren't they actually allowed in. Like we weren't yeah. they, we weren't they allowed in because we were just like new kids on the block. They were like, no, these teams are established and these teams have done it, so you can't play. And I'm like, right, okay then. And you just accepted it because you didn't know any better. Yeah. Um, but obviously in FPC, like we were like the first thing we done was like, no, let's open this up to to everybody. Um, but you were forced to though, really, because obviously with the, especially with the world rankings going out, you, it would kind of become the only thing that kind of kept the community alive. No, that was thirteen. Yeah, I think as well though, it's almost like nowadays it's been completely turned on its head. Because I remember being back in the day, like whilst we were going for the rankings, and that for me was the best time of the um, of playing clubs and what have you. A lot of the time, you weren't playing the best teams all the time. Like, you were happy to match up against an eight-man team that had 6,000 points because you'd be able to get, like, 10 points off them oh, and what have you. And then the um, the tournaments come about because it was sort of, well, what if we get all the best teams together and put them in a tournament and see how it went? And then once the tournament came up, as you say, it was only once every few months. So there was a lot of anticipation. And a lot of the time, the best teams would win it every single time because if you didn't, then you wouldn't. You wouldn't get another chance for like another three or four I also months. I remember the other thing is about the world rank, the EA world rankings. Like you're saying, so you, so everybody would search seven plus. That that was your that was your search parameters. Uh, yeah. You search seven plus, then you search ten plus, you search seven plus, and that, that was because you wanted to point farm, but you didn't want to be seen as a scumbag searching four plus. So yeah. basically, what would happen is, is that that you would play and you would go through a night and you might not find a, a, what you would call a tap level. To, you maybe find a couple of decent teams. Um, teams that you're expected to beat or whatever, um, but you wouldn't you wouldn't come up against like a foregone or a divine or a unity like a right top tier team on FIFA 12. But see when you did, oh it was fucking bedlam man. It was like it was like 
you know, people were right up for it. Like they were like, "Come on, into these bastards!" No, that. Do you know what I mean? It was like it was, it was so game fucking chat. top. The thing as well, yeah, the game chat. You could hear yeah, everyone when you scored um, a goal. Uh, it, was awesome. it was. It was absolutely. It was fucking bedlam in game chats, man. Like it was absolute bedlam. It was so toxic, man. And it was. Well, like, I don't know if you remember Andy, but like. You'd come up against, like I remember in Foregone, you come up against Divine or what have you, and you play nine v eleven, like we play without fullbacks yeah. or what have you. Yeah, like it's the time. Yeah, yeah, aye. Like yeah, it's unheard of nowadays. Like if someone has, if you can't get eleven, it's just like cancel the session. I'm not gonna yeah. lie though, I think half really the would end up getting banned though if like they had game chat back on internationals. Some of the fucking stuff that used to go on, <laughs> especially when you play the Germans or something. Uh, yeah, it used to be bad on here too. I remember back when in like FIFA, like uh, FIFA 15, I think it was still in. There was people reporting racism left and right oh, after some man. games. Like it was you bad. Remember, you remember when Scotland went to play the the Welsh and you banned Risco for playing in the game, for playing sheet noises, doing the fucking. Hey, hey, and you get hey. banned for playing in that game and that. Oh. I absolutely lost it, man. <laughs> One of the funniest things I ever seen happened in an international. It was uh, it was Scotland. It was I I F P C Scotland v Russia, and um, this guy um, this guy was bundling me on a corner. He was like a striker. He was trying to bundle me on the corner to it was FIFA twelve. He was trying to bundle me on the corner to obviously get an advantage for his centre back mate. But back then the way physics worked was if you were bigger, bigger and stronger, you just fucking ragdolled them. So I barged him, and I'm no joking, right? He went, he's, he's pro launched into the stand, literally 40 yards into the stand, <laughs> yeah. man. And I, we I've were had all that, buckled. I've had the, the, I call it the uh, the fucking, it was, I always, I had that happen to me once in the Champions League game on VFL. It's like the oblivion thing, where it's just yeah. like, I someone made a mock up of it, and I like fucking flew over to the stands, like on the floor, <laughs> fucking spinning. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that was, but yeah, like it used to happen, like. Once every hundred games, someone would just get thrown across. <laughs> yeah. No reason. She's <laughs> like that. That why they like they nearly scored by that because we were all fucking, we were all cacking ourselves, man. Everybody was just pissing themselves. Like this this mad Russian guy just landing in top deck of the stand. Just fucking hilarious, so it was, man. Kind of half a beaten track, but I. Um, the just going back to the IFPC thing. We, we, how? How hard would you would you say? Because because I remember at the time, man. I was just like like I was the way maybe the way Gringo was three years ago. So the way, mm. so I was just like, go do that and get it done, and then your fucking excuses. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. I, I know like like because like I would what I would do is I would like um I would, I would give you all the talk. I like oh the best thing in the world. You're the greatest and all that. Come in and help me. And then when you were mm. in, I'd be like, like go fucking get that job done. <laughs> 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 go, go fucking get these teams I don't want your fucking excuse after you'd had all that part in the back saying how wonderful you were but how difficult oh. was it like with me pressuring you about getting these teams in and organising these World Cups with all these kind of foreign people and like, how hard um, was it? I mean we sort of play I think it I think I don't know if I speak for JR as well but I'd say we, we probably just winged it to be honest yeah, yeah, literally <laughs> I think it was hard getting, obviously you'd get these confirmed teams and then you'd want them to submit squads and then they'd just go silent for however long and you'd chase up, it like, it's hard to chase up like someone who speaks your language, let alone someone that like, doesn't even know what it, 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 it did kind of help though, the fact of, especially the guys that were in the initial sort of FPC, like we were all pretty well known at that time, so all you'd have to kind of bring in is maybe like a foreign guy, like an Esteban or someone, and it kind of made it a little bit easier, but it was literally just winging it, just sending random messages out and hoping that fucking you know, someone come back to you, and then I start arguing in the chat about it for four days, and then see what happens. Yeah, no, that's it. We had that little um, that little section on the forum, didn't we? Oh yes, um, absolute chaos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's it. Right, we like we we Marty and Roboto and all that. I'm mean, all like, I mean, that was like a fucking game chat that back of the forum, the one for the staff, man. That idea, just, like that Kyle, there was a lot of ego. There was a lot of egos in there, like yeah. people who felt that their opinion mattered more than anybody else's. <laughs> yeah, so it was like a lot of. I, I, I'd probably include in myself in that. Yeah, okay. back in that everybody, time. everybody was like that back then. That, that was the scene. Um, I mean, the whole premise of FPC forums was. Uh, I mean, we put on it by the community for the community, but literally it was um, to to slag the community by the community. Everybody just went on the forums every night, and it was ten pages at. You're a cunt. You're an asshole, 
Yeah, that was the first every time we could week. ever do that, though, wasn't it? Really, if you think about it, because all every FBPA was very sort of strict Regimented. and had rules and stuff. No. FPC. There didn't want any debates. I think that was the main problem. Like, we, Unity or Fogon would come up against each other or Divine or what have you. And, like, we'd be debating about something that went on in game. And they'd be like, now, now, no fighting. And it's like, well, no, we're just, you know, we're yeah. just having some, I don't know, let's say some forceful words, words with each other. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> forceful words. <laughs> <laughs> You'd write one insult to him, you know, and you just have a whole page really well written and that you're just looking at. Well, that's the thing, like Dags has just said about the best thing was the unity thread after a session, but a lot of people don't understand is I used to play that forum like a fiddle. Like I'm an old hand, I used to go in there and wind people up, I'd be like that. Like say, say just say for example, we played Phoenix, right, and I know, I'm sitting there and I know that Phoenix has battered us, but I'd go in and go, aye, these fucking jobbers have beat us, man, they're absolute shite, LBY wide all game, crosses all game, they did this, they did that, and then the next thing you know, you've got 10 Phoenix guys on that thread, <laughs> <laughs> gone absolute ham, man, and then everybody would be joining in, and Unity, the Unity thread was always the most popular thread, because I would go in and just wind it right up, man, and sit for ages, but you know something that really always got all my tits about it? Nobody else for Unity ever helped. Yeah, never never helped. <laughs> like Dylan, Dylan, like Dylan or that like... used to come in. Dylan or that used to come in and start slagging me. I would be like, me versus a whole fucking forum. And I'd be like, where are these cunts doing? <laughs> the only thing was, no one ever played good football against Unity. Like, if you kept it on the floor and played it fast, you spammed A. If you kept possession, then yeah. you were playing it round the back. If you played it over, you were just spamming LB1. <laughs> like, no one's ever had a good game against Unity <laughs> the entire yeah. the year of the club. In 10 years, mate, I've still not seen one. <laughs> In 10 years, I've still not seen anybody have a good game. Oh, I like them days, <laughs> No, I was. I must admit, I was. I was pretty good back in the day. But see, see now, I don't even think I could be bothered with that. Even when people come in my chat now and they go good game, like back in the day, that that used to wind me up when I first started. Share, I'd be like, good game, you fucking cunt. No, I just lost it to fuck. <laughs> it wasn't a good game, right? But see now, I'm just like, um, uh, see now, I'm just like, I right, well done, man. Whatever, because I, I just, I don't know. It's just, I don't have the same. The same kind of verb for it anymore. The same, the same feeling. You've like, mellowed with age. No, it's not. I've, I've no. I've definitely no mellowed. Believe me. But I'm, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm. I'm more. Understand that the game is just pure pash. It's hard though because you have to remember though when we all started all this and all the memories we're talking about the game had literally only the game mode had only been out for what a year so yeah. it's all so brand new and everyone's trying to do this and that and. I just think when they took the world rankings out, they took that away, like, and it no, just never did. quite come back. Like, I mean, they've got I mean? seasons in, it's just like, you've got, like, I mean, no offence to Sam Tap Tap, but Sam's up there with four million games played Tap with a leaderboard. <laughs> you kind of compete with, like, somebody that plays from four o'clock to twelve o'clock every day playing, rattling yeah. out games, you just kind of compete, but yeah, he would have got, what would have happened to his team back in the day was that he would have got that many points that he wouldn't have been able to accrue any more. But if he yeah. because he's playing eleven man, he'd have come up against eleven man teams, and there, there was proper organised top end eleven man teams, and they'd have oh. just ripped all his points off him. Like they would have just night after night annihilated his points. The World yeah. Cup predictions yeah. will come after. Um, but we'll, we'll get into the squads and that later. Um, what were you were saying though about like Sam Tap Tap and, and how the game is now that it's just like the common theme of just gaming in general, isn't it? It's the same with COD. They've just made it more um, accessible. To the point where, like, right. it's less it's so less competitive, and, and like any casual guy can just yeah, can walk in and just get to the leaderboards, isn't it? No, that's it's like that's that's why that's why the whole thing with like games played and being at the top of the leaderboard, like, like Joe Joe will know more than Andy and and, and Chrissy and Jr. But Cam Hendo, like back in the day, would always brag about being the best centre back in the fucking world, and everyone was like, "Well, you're not. You just played like eighty thousand games." That's the one. They love me. They love me. Well, I mean, it, it says a lot when my son, my son last year's 10 year old, 10 years old, and, and he's sitting saying, they've just made the game easy for shitters, because all you need to do is sit there and pod A. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that a word for word crap? I like that. No, no, not exactly, but um, <laughs> but he, even he understood that, that it was just pick up and play at 10 years old. Like mm -hmm. He knew, he was like, because I told him, I said to him, don't, don't hod A, just learn to play the game manual. And you'll become a lot better player. So he he actually plays full manual in terms of like uh, defending and stuff. 
But he doesn't. Mm. Obviously, he doesn't play manual passing and manual shooting and all that. You, you just can't, because I mean, I've tried to do that too. Actually, way Chrissy, we had we had a manual game against each other, a full blown manual game. <laughs> I remember that. It was the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, the, no, the, le- the less said about it, the better, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like I, I mean the FPC. So Aaron, so so when you started bowling, you only bowled it was like eight, was it eight teams? Am I right in seeing your first? Oh, I started off even smaller than that. I think the first World Cup was like four teams, and that was four it. Teams. I think it was because this is a while back now. That was season eleven, so we're talking like 30, 31 seasons ago, which is like Jesus Christ, like six Fifas ago. Uh, and I think we just did the. I just think we did the basics. We just did England. Uh, Ireland, the home nations, rest of the world. No, I think we did six actually. I think we did England, Ireland, rest of the world, Wales, Scotland, um, and then one other. I think we did like six really easy nations that we knew we could fill, mm. and then we just went from there. And we just took it from there. And I think I, I can't remember. I think it varied per World Cup because sometimes we had nations re-entering, sometimes we didn't. So it was like a one big group of six, and then the top two would go through. Uh, to to like a, like a grand final, or it would be like four, and we just do one group of four, and then of course the site got bigger. You get more connections in in the scene, and then you recruit more and more teams. It just went from there. So it's just I think the whole thing with it is just one time someone just went up to me and was like, "So you've got all these clubs and all these leagues, and you do the realism part of it. Why has it not been a World Cup before?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know what? Well, good point." And it just made it. Here's a question for uh, that's a question based on all, yeah, that's question the one. to all of you, right? So Aaron. Um, first point of the question is, is: Is do you think these small tournaments devalue the the devalue a win? I.e., so if I held a twenty eight team in on that, if I held a thirty two team tournament, it's obviously harder to win than what it is to win a sixteen tournament. Do you think like that kind of devalues a win when it's so so small? And the second part of the question is. The guys that's older, he's Joe, um, Joe, Chrissy, and JR, and I guess myself. Was it harder to win a tournament back in the day than what it is now in terms of internationals and even maybe even like um, just pro clubs tournaments in general? I, I think it. I think it really depends on your kind of outlook of it because the way I look at it, I never really take the view now where I'm like, oh, I devalue the very first World Cup compared to this World Cup coming up because I just look at it as a kind of like a growth and an evolution type thing. At the end of the day, it's like that saying, you can only beat what's in front of you. You can only, you know, play what's in front of you. So I think in some cases, some will argue one side or the other. One side will say that, well, back in the day with six national teams, uh, the, you know, the pools were a lot bigger. So then you had a lot more of the big players playing. Like, for example, Ireland wasn't Ireland and Northern Ireland. So you'd have all the Irish playing. So a lot of people may argue that it was potentially harder back then, especially with the fact that they prefer older FIFAs. Uh, for me personally, I don't I don't value any World Cup above another World Cup. Even in the even in the rest of the world one that I won in like season eighteen or whatever it was, still I, I think every World Cup has its own value and I think each one gets better and better the more people that you know you, you outreach to and the more people you get involved. So I think that's that. And I think in terms of uh, difficulty i think it's again it depends because there's so many players that used to play back in the day that kind of made teams ballers but then there are teams back in the day that didn't have ballers that play now so like for example uh you know kenny lfc doesn't he's completely vanished like he was a major part in any international team so there's like an example from fifa 13 yeah, so I mean, it's it's, a, it's just it's a case where it, again it depends because if you had all the people back on one stage now, you probably produce like the best ever World Cup and in the scene. I think it's just a it's just periods of like periods and moments when you look back in the day. If I if you put a gun to my head and said, it, was it harder to win a World Cup in in FIFA 15 or, or 16 compared to now? as in FIFA 20, the one coming up, I'd probably say yeah, it was harder because again there were less nations, there was more uh you know there was more scope for player pool but at the same time the way that i am and i think the way that you know me now and the way joe knows me is like i'm not all about just keeping it small like if i have the ability to go and climb to 16 i will like i remember the first world cup i ever said well i ever did on vfl in season 11 i said to all the admins i was like i want to get this to eight at least over the next like year or two then i got to eight and i was like right i want to get to 16 like my whole thing doesn't stop like Right now, like if I could get to 20, I would gladly do 20 and do like four groups of five. And I reckon that would be an absolute class tournament, but it's, I don't want to push it too much 
Because, I mean, there's, there's good teams there now, but you don't want to dilute the quality so much to the point where it's just like you're having fucking group matches against like Bosnia or no, fucking but, you know, guys, I Bolivia. I actually slightly disagree with. Yeah, I don't agree with that too. I'd, I'd actually disagree with a point. I think you have to break it down into like the three different sections. You have to have, look at it from FPC Internationals and IFBPA, which is different, which I would say was far, far harder to win. Back in the oh yeah, yeah, I'd agree but, with that. But, then, agree but with that. then I think there's an intermittent stage where I think FV, um, VFL internationals, I would say they're actually maybe harder to win now. Because when I listen to people, because I wasn't around for a couple of years, and then I listen to people talk sort of about World Cups they won, sort of kind of when he was just kind of starting, mm. and I listen to some of the players that they say that they had in his team, and they talk about these teams like they were great and stuff, and I think these people wouldn't have even got into sort of a top 20 sort of team. So I think if you, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. Like, I think the quality is overall getting a little bit better sort well, of with VFL. Well, here's the thing about fun. VFL as well, right? Let's let's not make any bones about it. When VFL came about, um, and we used to play them, we just we used to laugh when a VFL team came up. We used to piss ourselves laughing, and this is easy. <laughs> These are fucking yeah. shite. Right? There was no 11 man players in, the 11 man players stuck to their own teams. No, they went and played VFL, but they never went and played. They didn't take VFL sessions serious, they, apart from when it was VFL actual physical league games or whatever. So you mm-hmm. you come up against a VFL team that was just like, these are fucking rotten, man. Smash them. You used to like run about. You used to get your. You used to do the mighty duck and all that. And you used to fucking have your goalie running up front, and you would just smash them four five nil, and it would be a laugh for like forty minutes almost. That was the standard. That's not the standard now. I mean, we lost to a yeah. VFL team last night. And they were fucking very good going toe to toe is. Um VFL standard is it, it, it's basically the socks have been pulled right up through the roof because it's completely awash now with eleven man players. It's it's the, the scene is so integrated into VFL yeah. now that the standard is a uh, so that's my point of the argument is is that I think the middle the middle part of FIFA if we're talking about for now to back then is is that uh, as you say GR uh, FIFA 11, 12 and 13 the, the, the kind of pinnacle standard was the 11 man then there was a middle ground where like VFL was quite low standard this is when the bridge started happening and now you've got it's just it's all one it's all completely integrated to yeah. the point where any, I think any VFL team picking up its um, its best team can go toe to toe with any top 11 man yeah, team so I don't think there's a differentiation be between be them like I think of the actual like I was t- I was saying it to Andy the other day. I, I actually see what you're doing with like you like to give it like people a chance and stuff, which is great obviously. But I think if you're talking about if you wanted a hundred percent like the best sort of nations with the best quality, I think it kinda has to be done a little bit different than sort of how it is now, which is it's a tough one because I see what you're doing, but then also don't necessarily love it. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I get what you mean. Like the, the way that I angle it and look at it is, I take it from the view where I back in the day, I was like I used to pick the kind of more unknown people just because it would wind people up. I was very much a wind up merchant. So basically, you know, this is back. This is back when like fucking. Drizzy and Dylan and that rule at Schalke and everyone was just saying, oh yeah, give him England and, you know, let's just watch them in an England kit, just ruin everyone I can do at club level. And I was just like, you know what, no, because that's not what this is about. It's the VFL World Cup. I want the VFL people to have a chance. And then my mindset changed more and more as World Cups happen more and more often. And I was just like, at the end of the day, I look at it now and I'm like, I look at it from a sense of where it's mixed, like Andy says, like there's no 11s in VFL, it's not like an us v them mentality anymore, it's just all kind of mixed, everyone's there. But I look at it in a sense where I see people in the England setup that want to be able to get into like comp level action and want to get into playing 11s like in World Series events and stuff. And I'm thinking, these are people that I pick as managers that will not only trial people like they promised to, because there's been people that I've just gotten the England manager or gotten the management, and then within 20 minutes of the management being announced, whacked up their squads for like the tournament in two weeks. My exactly. Very first, my very first World Cup with Brian, or as people know him as Junkie Brian, literally never done any trials, just basically said, there's your squad, there we go. Exactly, and I think... That's what I, think, I would do too. That, that it, it can work, and it, it has worked. People have won World Cups like that, but at the same time, it depends what angle you look at it from. And then maybe an angle from, like, you know, UJR, even, even Andy, you look at it and go, yeah, that's correct, because you're picking the best people, you're picking the best names, that'll give you the best team. 
And then for me, from an outside perspective, I'm thinking, who is going to be a guy that's going to trial people, sit down with people and spot gems? Because I think there has been at least... For the last five World Cups, every tournament, there is one name that comes out at the end of each World Cup that a lot of people in the 11 scene now, or in the comp scene, shall I say, look at and go, who the fuck is this guy? Jesus Christ, he's good. Like, there have been people made in, that have been made in World Cups that wouldn't have got that chance if the management went to, you know, like a superstar. Um, for me, I think um, the, um, the difference between sort of what it was back in the day, and especially now, is that the skill gap is yeah, a lot different between the, the biggest players and the um, yeah, and obviously the lower standards. So just if you've got a player coming point. through on um, on VFL, there is a lot more. They're a lot more likely to be able to play as competitively or get into one of the top teams as they were back in the day. Back in the day, in terms of the international scene. There's probably only about three teams that were going to win it anyway. But when you did play them, you'd have to be at your absolute best. Otherwise, you'd have no chance. Like that was pretty much the way it was. Same as the tournaments. The tournaments were you. You could literally handpick one or four teams that were going to win it. Mm. But if the yeah. teams came across each other, knocked each other out early, then it was basically it would be down to one team, and they were generally going and won it. Yeah, that, that, no, that, because it. the skill gap, the skill gap, and uh, you literally just brought up the point I was going to make in terms of the skill gap. I, I think the mm. skill gap's so small now it's worth trialing. Whereas back then, I could have named, I could have just named a Scotland team, a team players, and that would have just smashed every other combination of Scotland team that you could find. Mm -hmm. well, England, Ireland, Scotland, wasn't it? You kind of knew that before the tournament. Germany used to creep in a little bit, but yeah. Not really I love really finding really. gems. That's what I would. I mean, you're the same man. A bit of the sense. I would. I would have it, I'd, in my head. I would have the squad that I'd want, but I would still try because I do love finding the gems. Well, I mean, you just look at the Phoenix squad, and that's practically there's there's names in there, but there's also well, I mean, I'd, I mean, I'd ones that would never get a chance. Whatever. Whatever. Every single year, I've tried to pay, I've tried to falter somebody through into Unity, whether it's one, two, or three players. Um, I mean, so I, I um, back in the day, I found, I found Marshall. So everybody knows who Marshall 89 HD is. He's, a, he's obviously a big YouTuber and all that now, but he played in Unity for five years, um, for FIFA 11 through to pretty much 16. Um, and I found, him, I found him in a pro rank match. I literally found him, and, yeah, and he was regarded as, as, as people, <laughs> and I mean every single team said he was the best CM on the game. And I literally found that guy in a pro rank game. I hated him when you first got him, I remember that. I thought this guy's fucking dog shit, man. And he was like, nah, 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 trust me, he's going to be good. Next minute, he's like the best centre mid on the game. And yeah. JR found um, found a few gems in his uh, in his time. Oh, yes, uh, half them with me on my fake accounts. But... Yeah. <laughs> I, I rumbled you, I rumbled you in one <laughs> corner. One corner, I rumbled you. I was like, that's Chrissy G. They kept calling yeah, everyone Shaggy in the group. The figure four leg lock in a hit, hit, hit a corner. <laughs> that could, that could reveal my identity. Every month, man. <laughs> but, God, I, I, think the argument, I think the argument for trialing now is a lot. I, I think you need to trial now because the skill gap is so low on the game. Um, I think the, I think the skill gap between, like, uh, uh, I mean, but see the thing is in saying the skill I mean, gap. They, they do, but even, sorry, Andy, but even saying that skill gap now, see, now we've taken the, wall, the wing back thing, so just centre back because obviously I'm a top 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 as ever being one. There's so many struggling. Oh, aye. But that gap has literally went from that to that. Yeah, it's but just a, a struggle. And... No, but this is the thing, though. Like this is the, it keeps happening every year. I think I don't I I don't remember like a recent FIFA where you can say, oh yeah, the skill gap was is higher than last year. Like regardless of every year, every FIFA, no matter what engine it's going to be on, no matter no matter it's the next fucking 15, 20 years. I think it's just going to FIFA and just games in general will just get easier and easier because the general market to target now, if you're a gaming company, is just everyone rather than a select group. Yeah, and I think that's just how it is. I just I don't I don't ever see. FIFA going back to fucking the best one I ever played was FIFA 12. I don't ever see it going back to FIFA 12 levels. You know, it's just always going to be shit. Like, I personally feel like the, like 18, 19, and 20, they've all been bad. But, like, I hated FIFA 18 because it just made everyone think that they were Lionel Messi fucking banging 30 goals in the VFL season when before Dylan held the record for, like, five years with 20. Then it's like, you go up to FIFA 19, was just a joke of a game. Like, I'll fight anyone that says FIFA 19... Uh, sorry, FIFA 20 is worse than 19 because it's just a flat lie. And then, FIFA, and then 
FIFA 20 is just FIFA 20 with the win-back stuff. It's just it's, it's, there's still issues there. It's like there's no... The last three FIFAs of this cycle, since they go in cycles of three, I think the, the best FIFA you can probably say that there's been is probably FIFA 18. And yeah. Like I said, that was shit. That's probably... Yeah, that's still like a four out of ten. So, FIFA, uh, like, in my opinion, what's harm to FIFA is uh, Frostbite. The last good FIFA yeah. for me with a skill gap, a proper skill gap, was FIFA 15. Um, and then FIFA 16 was the last Ignite engine. Um, it wasn't that good. Um, but yeah, it, was, it, it was playable, but it was not that good. FIFA 16, it wasn't like this. That's when the skill gap really, when I, when I found that the skill gap just closed up between all the teams. But as yeah. soon as they brought in Frostbite, Frostbite to me has been the worst thing that's ever happened to, to, to the FIFA cycle. Um, I, I don't know who in their infinite wisdom thought, and I, I've said this many times on stream, and I'll say it to him, boy in the fucking face, but. Whoever thought sticking the Battlefield engine into a fucking football game is a good idea needs to be called outside and fucking pinned in the gun and shot. Like, 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 you can, but you can tell when you're playing the game that you, the, the, the mechanics of the game don't work. They don't work. They actually don't work. Like, the physics of the game don't work. Like at least we ignite it was it was a Madden engine so it was for an American football game so it had the kind of physics of, of, obviously you got bundles and stuff but it got... People, the physics worked to a degree. You still got bundles mm. and you still got stupid stuff, but no, it is through the fucking roof. It's the, literally the, close, the closer the they want to take it to realism, the further away from funds that they take it. That's and I probably, think to, on, to on, top of, on, top, on top of that, though, I think it also I think that the 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 these the meetings that EA have where they fly out these foot influencers before the game comes out and they give them like the really raw beta, like. The gameplay and how the gameplay will be and all that kind of shit is not dictated by people that want to play 11 v 11. It's dictated by a 1 v 1 audience. And I think for as long as foot is as big of a eSport than it is and has people watching as much as it is, then it's just always going to be the way it is. You, know, you want to tell like, a story on the basis of this? Like, go no on, fucking take joke. us back. No, no, no. No, even take you back. Last year, the guy that was fucking game testing the game engine was shooting the rang fucking white. He was shooting to the rang goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's who's testing your game, man. Some fucking moron doesn't even know what he's doing. Is fucking shooting into the rang goal. That's a true story, by the way. Like a guy's fucking. Sh this is a guy that's testing the game engine for us to play, and he's fucking shooting in the opposition goal. Like, what thing is the skill gap so different? It's so uh, similar. He probably still drew. It's not a game. It's just. It's just I think it's just how it is. It's just. It's just how our companies are now, man. I just. I, I think at the end of the day, it's always going to be a case where. I don't think the skill gap will ever... It depends. You never know. Maybe on the new gen consoles in the winter they completely get rid of Frostbite and they bring in some sort of new engine or they... they I don't, don't think they'll ever go back to Ignite. I don't think they'll go back in anything they do. It's like the same people that ask for the fucking accomplishment book back. It's like it's never going to happen. Like They'll never go backwards because then they'll be seen as a, just you know a shell of a company in it. So it depends if they develop Frostbite more, if they stick with it or if they go completely different on new gen. I, I, think that... think, I actually think they'll go more towards the team player aspect of it. I can see that and then turn it into some kind of foot sort of thing where you well this is the or this is the thing with the rumor that i that i've heard and with people that i've spoke to in dms and stuff that always talk to these ea guys that are massive youtubers and stuff it's like they say and this could have been this could have been a podcast in itself but a lot of them are always saying ah yeah they, they love the idea of 11 uh, 11 v 11 but it's just the logistics and the costs and i, I said i get that business sense of it because at the end of the day really you, I, I, get, I, I completely I agree with you but the way they look at it is oh well we run an 8 team 11s tawny in a in a in a building you know that's 88 people it's 88 that's accommodation the tournaments that they have the new they have a, there's, they send 100 to 50 to 100 people to these to Romania to Madrid to Barcelona it's, it's the same numbers mm. but just different context mm. of they're going out to play single player and blow the tits off everybody. They're going to go play eleven man. When they're going to see. Well, this is the thing. There's, there's, there's that they say about that, and then you take into account the other aspects where they've said that, um, in their opinion, uh, Jesus, what did he say? He said, oh, Christ, it was what Chew Boy said on Twitter one time, and and the guy relayed it to me. And it was either Chew Boy said it on Twitter, or he said it on Twitch, one or the other, and he said something. Someone asked him about clubs, and he said that no one, no one would want to watch. 
uh, 11 v 11 because no one knows who the who the um, the players are. So, for example, no one knows who JR is, but everyone knows who Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar is. Like that's that's the kind of point. And on top of that, he also said like, one way to get them known is to play the game. Exactly, promote them, promote them. I, wreck, I, I absolutely wrecked any I wrecked, uh, I wrecked Gareth Reid on this argument, right? So Gareth Reid, um, Spike and all that, it used to be the FEPA. They they all had um, the NVA. See, because I was the asshole forum, I was the forum where everybody swore and everybody. They was like calling everybody cunts on it. I never get listened to, right? But I eventually got in with Gareth Reader, right? And my conversation with Gareth Reader was, why you use no, put, why you use putting stuff into head to heads and foot? And this was at the very, very start of foot before foot was like fucking hundreds of millions of pounds, right? So because mm. it just, I'll go right back to the start. I used to drive out my out my out my street, right? And there was a billboard at the side of the street, and the billboard said B11. It was FIFA 11. It said B11. They were pushing and selling uh, 11 man teams. That's what they were selling. That was a big thing that year. They were pushing and pushing and pushing it. Um, foot was like a fucking a shit stain in the underpants of the universe. Nobody knew what the fuck it was. Nobody cared. So clubs was massive, right? But as the years were going on, like when we hurt FIFA 12, when we hurt FIFA 13, was when I had the big argument because they fucked the leaderboards and all that. And what he said to me was, well, there's a million head-to-head games and there's only 200,000 clubs games. And I says, that's the most simplistic and illogical view I've ever heard to games per head on a club. And he's like, how? And I says, I says, okay, right. I says, so if I got 111 man teams on and they all play five games each, right, every night and they all do it against each other, so that's 50 times, 50 times five. Because you've got 11 people in there. That's 22 people. That would be 11 head-to-heads. But when there's... When there's 22 people in one game, that's only one game, but it's fucking 22 players. Mm. So you're looking at it, he's looking at it, a case of, well, well, you don't got the same numbers of games played. I'm saying, but how can you when the fucking, the player market squashed into teams? Uh, you've got, yeah. If you've got, if you've got 100,000 people playing clubs and 100,000 people playing head-to-heads, <laughs> you're going to have less people playing fucking uh, like clubs man, games. Less games created. Less games created, yeah, aye. Yes, and he's like, ah, he said, I don't see your point. And, I, and, and that was the, at the end of the argument, he says, I don't see your point on that. And I says, that's because you're a fucking idiot. Um, and that was the end of that discussion. But I also says to him, I, I, I mean, I'd said all this stuff to him about stuff that could improve clubs and uh, like, because I mean, he hosted me up now. He used to host me and float about my stream all the time, Gareth Reader. Um, which a lot of people don't know. Like, like back, in, back when I first started streaming, he would, he would host me. Um, he even got EA to host me before the EA's account was massive. Like they actually like uh, tweeted out my stream and hosted me and all that, but didn't really do much for me back then. Obviously, no, it involved? does a lot. But is he still involved in clubs? No, he's gone, man. He's gone. Thank fuck. Uh, he was uh, He was just his head was mince. He never had a screw with what he was doing. But this is the this is the same company that 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 pushed B11 right. That that had footwork and golden balls and all that. They they were in the game. They're actually named in the game on FIFA 11. Like they were actually oh, genuine shit, yeah, teams. They got their guys. They got their guys. I believe to test the game against each other. Two high-level teams because that's what they were pushing. And in the space of one year, bang, foot, foot. They that's the what the, um, could yeah. make them. That's, that's what the point, point system was based on as well, wasn't it? Like yeah, we go back to the seven plus four plus thing. Like if you come up, if you had eleven men and you come up against the team with four people, you would get a player bonus for the fact you had more players than them. Like that was completely what they were pushing, and then I don't know. It's almost like they have these little projects every few years, and then it just sort of falls off, and the focus goes elsewhere. Mm. It's like a, it's like it's like the company is like a fucking kid with ADHD. You just don't know how to focus on one thing for a prolonged period of time. That's just how it is. Let's just say the way it is. They're lying bastards. Yeah, it's just it's just the whole thing is that like like you said with with the Gareth bloke. It's just they don't understand. They, they don't. They don't get it. I don't know how they can claim to be football fans either. Because like again, the whole thing that True Boy said as well that really pissed me off about this whole thing. On top of oh, they won't know the players. And my response to that was like market them. The other thing he was like uh, was like oh yeah, you know no one. This is this was before FIFA became high scoring. So I think this this is still in seventeen because eighteen it just went into a clusterfuck of high scoring games. And I remember him saying uh, again on Twitch on Twitter and he was something like. Yeah, you know, it's just it won't take off because who really wants to sit in a stadium and pay tickets for entry and, and watch a nil nil or, or watch like a boring game, or like a one one. Fucking I'm just sat- the Premiership every week. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's exactly what I said. It's, it's exactly fucking what real football is. You watch football every week and you don't see a six five every week or a fucking three three. You see, 
games that are like you're tactically going up against each other and you have a fucking you know a way of playing a team as a team as a sit exactly exactly and that, that just extremely pissed me off as well because it's just like it's, it seems okay one minute the excuse is logistics and the costs next minute it's oh we don't know how to market the players next minute it's oh the games are boring like it's every time there is some sort of excuse and I still think and I still believe that what JR said to further back about how they want to introduce either team playing to ultimate team and have some sort of team mode there which they can branch like branch out like an esport or what they do with Volta is turn it into online and start pushing that as a 5v5 because that's the key thing that I always heard back from the same guy in the DMs it's oh yeah they don't like 11v11 because it's not really like other esports like COD and NBA and stuff so you know looking smaller scale and the only thing that I can think of that they've introduced that is smaller scale is online Volta because then, uh, if you I think about, play 5v5 I don't, FIFA. I, I, I don't think I don't think it would work either. I think it would be shit. I, I don't I don't want that at all. I would my whole ethos. I think Andy, that you know, is 11s or nothing. But yeah. the whole thing with him is it ticks every box from what these people like Chu and these guys that this YouTuber is talking to every year when he gets invited to these things are saying. It's a low scale, so therefore the logistics and the costs and shit are way lower because it's fives v 11s. So that's one ticked off. B. Uh, it's more marketable because you can get teams in like the hashtag lot, like, uh, you know, like, like the actual pro teams that people actually pay attention to on, on ultimate team. You can get them entering as a fucking squad. So there's the marketing issue gone. Number three, if they make it street football or FIFA street or whatever, you're never going to have a game that ends nil nil. You're going to see lots of fucking over the top flicks and over the top skills and shit. that's going to make fucking kids lose their mind. There you go. There's all three boxes ticked. It's the only thing I can see that, that they'll do with it. And if they don't, then I don't think they'll they'll do anything with eleven. So I would love to see reality of it. the numbers for people that actually switch FIFA on and actually go into Volta. I can put my hand up. Bro, and I've never been in. I have been in Volta once I've in never the been beginning, in. and I've never been back in that mode. I've never opened it at all. I've never clicked on it. Once I've never been yet. in. I, 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 an ultimate job. team. Was the same. I'd never been in, like for yeah, the, for all the yeah, years. Yeah, that's the worst part about Volta is though. If you actually, when you play it, once you start playing, you play two games, you'll play twenty. But it's it's built for team play. It's not built yeah. for. It's not built to just play on your own like fucking bag of nuts. Like you, yeah. you don't want to just sit there. Like I completely agree. I think, I think the numbers, like Joe said, would be would be bigger. I don't think it would... Co See, the thing with EA is I don't think they actually have any sort of like cognitive intelligence where they think, oh, you know, if we make. Uh, Volta online and it's five mates playing against five other people like people are going to not play clubs anymore and are going to switch to Volta full time I think you get the ultimate team casuals and stuff that want a team play mode going on it more and there's more of them than there is of us so sure you would see numbers increase but I really don't know many 11s guys that would say oh well fuck pro clubs I'm off to Volta fives for the whole year so I just don't think it'll happen I don't think people like specifically go for one game mode anyway like, for example, if Clubs was better, I would have bought an Xbox again mm. at some point, and I'd probably be spending 100 quid a month on Ultimate Team as well. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Because I, it, think, it, I, think, I think it all depends, though, Chris, like, as well. The thing it all, that all depends on is, again, EA's, is EA's system. Because are you get, no one knows if EA, if they ever make Volta, you know, fucking 5v5 online, are they going to... Are they going to edit the, their game in a sense where you have one fucking pro across both modes, at clubs and, and Volta? Because, yeah. like, for example, like, that's the thing. If they make Volta, like, a thing next year, and it's online and it's for friends, but they make it two separate pros, I'm not fucking grinding a pro up twice. There's no way. I'll just grab my, my pro clubs build up, and then that's it. Right, listen, guys, before you go on, um, I think we need to draw because we're, we're pushing on, and I know Joe's got trials at half past eight, and I've got. Oh, no, no, I've not even started. I'll not be doing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm half at, I've said to my team, half at half past eight, but, my, but I, I think what we, what we need to do is, is we need to invite GR and, and Chrissy back on, and we actually talk about the actual mode, just clubs in general. Cause I think oh, yeah, that'd be this. fucking mate, get us up for five hours on that yeah, one. Yeah, I think, we can, yeah, I, I think this is a conversation that we can have because a lot of interesting points getting made and we're no we're not really getting to delve into it because because obviously I've shite house the time. I didn't realise we were gonna start going delving away into all this kind of stuff. I thought we were just we but we don't um we definitely don't stick to the kind of the kind of plan and remit in this podcast but, <laughs> um, but anyway I mean we've still got the World Cup stuff in that today. Um so we've we've got to do that. So we've got well I've got half an hour now so I so we can keep it rolling. But, um, so, I, so I'll, I'll, I'll speed through some World Cup shit for you, Andy. I got you. So, uh, 
yeah, yeah. World, World Cup. Cup. Um, this is more my, my area and Joe's area since Andy's so shit he's never been picked for Scotland. Just throw that in there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> He's not happy with that. One. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll take we'll take this one. So uh, I, I don't know. Did you, you didn't play internationals before VFL, or did you, Joe? I don't know. Yeah, I think I don't think I played any of the thingy ones. I was in squad, not but I never actually played. I don't think. Can't even really remember them back then. So how many World Cups have you won on VFL? Like fucking fourteen thousand. Yeah, I don't know how many. What the actual number is? Been in four. I won four of them and I don't know, I've lost two of the finals, I think. And the last right, one, so yeah. fucking, oh, fucking show off to my one. Cheers, man. Uh, so, uh, in terms of the teams and stuff, I've linked the uh, the doc in in the in the thingy chat because I, I don't know if JR already know too many people. I, I, I honestly don't know if Chrissy will know many people. I may know the guys in Scotland. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll go through a couple of the squads because people wanted to get our thoughts on predictions. So, they're only. There's not all 16 nations submitted yet and registered yet because, of course, the deadline for that is the this coming kind of Thursday. What did you say, Andy? Where have you put this? Uh, staff chat on Discord. All right, mate. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I think Andy will pull that up. I don't know. That's gonna fuck your camera up or not. No, but, no um, that's fine. When, when we talked about earlier like about well about bastards. England. When we, when we talked about earlier on about England managers and and uh, JR's point of view, you know, the best of the best should be picked. Uh, England again going with a, a sprinkle of new call-ups, new caps, uh, as well as uh, the proven quality. So, of course, Golden Ball winner from last World Cup, Bailey Ince, uh, with, with leading England's line. You've got guys in there like Asensio, uh, Animal, Pogs even had a great kind of last like six months. Um, Animal. Waddy, yeah. A lo- uh, create, create Harry as Harewood as well, or whatever you say his name. So you've got a lot of established names in there, but you've also got guys being given chances in there. Guys that, from talking to the guys that do the England setup, Ben Gunner 16 looked really, really fucking sharp in his in his trials over like two days. So they were really, really determined to give him a give him a uh, give him a call and give him a cap. But then as well, other guys in there as well, like Riddich has pulled his weight in trials. Uh, DS10 not really ever been involved in the England call up now there, and the squad overall looks so balanced that it's uh, it's interesting because I think whenever you look at World Cups. Uh, and, and rosters and squads and stuff, they have to have balance. I think if you look at the 23 list and you say, Jesus, all 23 of them are absolute fucking killers. Like, I, I never, ever see a team like that winning the World Cup because either you've got too much too much egos clashing, for example, people getting dropped and they're not showing up the next day for the knockouts, or you've got people playing their own way, thinking that they can't be told, you know, do an inside pass, do a long pass, they will, they will not listen to you. So. About, sorry, because I was getting a document up when you started. Is this England? That's England. Yeah, yeah that's England, yeah. That's, that's, that, I can't believe that squad. Let, see, the thing is, that, uh, so one thing I was going to say, right, see it, like, even looking, you get the, the Scotland screen, squad, there's the so screen. many of the actual, what you call them, the established players that either mm. didn't bother trialling or just, some of them in England actually get left out. There's a few that get left out that I was quite surprised, at, especially the likes of Joshie and Beza. Mm. Arguably the two best goalkeepers. Two of the best goalkeepers, especially Beza. Beza carried them at some point. I mean, the season he's had for Pescara and goals is frightening. And, you know, I mean, the thing, the, the thing with it, the thing with it though, is that after last tournament and England having uh, this will shock Andy a worse twenty-three than this time round. So they won the whole thing, man. They knocked out the whole French. They knocked out the French squad in knockouts, which has all like the, the French guys like Rodinho, Polga, and that lot in it. They knocked out. Uh, who didn't knock out the? They, well, they beat Scotland in the final. Yeah, I was in the final because I so, like it. That's that's yeah. what I'm blaming on. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, they, they had like I think with England, it's just the fact of everyone. Whoever gets England now just has a right to go. Yeah, I'll pick the people I base the best off of trials because if that England team did it uh, against teams like Polga and that like France, Joe Scotland, uh, Zed's Germany, then it can do it against anyone. That's the way that they think of it. So. Um, the only real things that I'll, I'll cap, I'll touch on really, is just the kind of the main, the main three that we've got submitted so far, which is England, Scotland, and surprisingly, I want to say uh, Northern Ireland. We can also touch on France. So Scotland, Joe is of course uh, in there. So talk to us about Scotland, Joe. What was the decision making like there? If you know anything about it, or are you surprised is it in or not in? Um, so well, we know there's a few that have come in again from people that could not. Uh, what do you call it? Prove that they were Scottish heritage, 
or that they couldn't prove that their dog was bought and stolen. <laughs> um, but I don't even know that half these guys are. Huh? The, the the one that was my surprise one that was left out was like Dylan Lewis plays for Iconic. That does done bits he's against us. He's in there. Uh, he's in there now, but he was left out originally. It's one of my, he's one of my shocks. There's a lot of boys missing from. Jack McKenzie and that. No, you never try. Never I, I'm no one. At, I'm no one at Dom's. No one at. Um... That's well, the thing. This is the thing, though, man. So many Scots that are new. That oh, this this one can he play? So so many boys that are going to need to step up if we're going to do anything. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing as well. Like going to Jr. And, and even Chrissy looking at these lists. Like a lot of the a lot of the big guys that you're mentioning. I don't know if Jack McKenzie is the same. I don't know if it applies to certain people that are missing. But a lot of the guys will not even bother putting their name down for an application, let alone a trial, if they see that the manager is someone that is not quote known. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. I don't. I don't put my mind on after what happened the last time I went him. I just refuse point blank to go on. No, nah, don't say that. You, you put your name down. You're on the commentary team, mate. That's why. <laughs> no, no, that's it. No, but, no that, that as well. But I did. Uh, uh, I wouldn't have put my name down. I didn't put my name down for buzzies. If you go check, I didn't put my name down for... I put it down and then I withdrew. I didn't go and play... Uh, yeah, I did that um, this year as well. I put my name down to go trial and then I said no I didn't want to but my reasoning being was that I wasn't going to sit there and have somebody judge me who I felt felt was beneath my quality yeah so I mean, that's, a, a, that's a, nutshell, a lot of how that's, that's a, pretty nutshell, much the same um, thing everyone has what, what Tiki did um, what Tiki did was put, by picking somebody who apparently had more World Cup experience than me was the most brainless thing I've ever heard so <laughs> that's quite bizarre uh, a minute so I was just like so I, so I was just like right okay so this guy's won one world cup in VFL <laughs> and I've won like double figure 11 v 11 tournaments and he's and he's picked him over me so I was like I, I ain't gonna enter with brainless guys that's doing that so that was to be fair we went out of that competition without conceding a think... single goal I think yeah, there's a point. Yeah, one day I'm going to suck on them nuts. Here's, we never here's, here's the thing, right? Here's the <laughs> thing. He's might have conceded a goal with me in the team, but I guarantee you he would have been tactically better going forward with me in the team. Ooh. I can't remember who the fucking front Because, like, I'm, like for example, for example, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm quite dangerous on stuff like set pieces and that. So you might have got a goal off a corner off me. Or I might have come up with one of my combinations where... Like some mad free kick that I fucking like turn out in, in Unity or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like there's just stuff that I bring that Danny Hughes doesn't bring. Or, or one of my LBYs or one of my big Y passes through the pitch could have just opened a team up. That that Danny Hughes doesn't have. He doesn't have that in his locker. Doesn't have like a fucking 80 yard LBY that puts somebody right through and goal. Just doesn't have it. I do. Every year I have it. Do you know what I mean? Like, so my point is, is that you might not have conceded a goal, but I think I offer more than just not conceding a goal. We might have won, we might have been through in the semi final two one, rather than going out no no on penalties. No no. It's hard though, especially when you get some of these VFL guys that go into management. Like you do find, like I I don't personally like it when people don't put their names down for trials and stuff because I think it just comes across a little bit wrong. But, yeah. When yeah. you do, you do find with some of the play. VFL guys, like they, they, they purposely will make it harder for people that are on the 11s, like even if they've won loads of stuff, because they kind of see you as like this ego and shit like that. I think it used just, to be, I think, I, I, I'll jump in, I think that used to be the case. I think it's less of the case now. I definitely think it's less of the case I now. Don't get, I, I, I don't get that. I can say I don't get that. Yeah, but my uh, logic. No, I know your logic, what James says, like make, making it hard. I mean, that was offered. Said, look, you don't need to try. We watch, watch your stream all the time. What you can do? And I'm like, no, no, I don't. I'll come in and do my. I'll do my thing. I think with, with, with what Jr. saying, it, 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 I think it depends, honestly, on attitude. Because okay, for example, look at um, let's say uh, Torpid in past World Cups. I don't know if he's in this one or not. I bring have to verify or not. But Tor, Tor, yeah. So Torpid, uh, to my knowledge, again, my knowledge in, in yours, you guys have seen from the, the past is fucking weak. So it's like. From what I know, he used to be in the 11 scene. He still is in the 11 scene. And he has a good attitude. I think when it comes to people, though, like, for example, back in the day, Drizzy, who at the point, at one point in VFL, was the best centre-back or best English centre-back that there was, winning trophies in Ballon d'Ors, who would come around in England, Fred, going, who the fuck's this shitter? I'm the fucking best. 
and yeah, has experience, for example, or going in my teams when I managed AC Milan and going, I'm not playing this game. How dare you put someone so shit next to me as centre back? People just get like an instant fucking off put off of that. I mean, if you come with a correct attitude and you uh, open yourself to play and open yourself to kind of going in with the squad, then I think you'll you'll get more more love in a sense. Whereas if you kind of have a terrible fucking attitude, then it's not even going to be entertained. I don't think. See you quantify. See you quantify my my whole Scotland thing with Tiki, right? Um, I don't hold any grudges against Tiki or that, right? Because you could have split hairs between me and Danny Hughes and Joe for that matter in their trials. Because not one of us put a fit ring, and it wasn't just us three. There was four or five centre backs in there that could have played, and every single one has never made any mistakes or anything. So the guy had a hard job to pick people. My issue, mm. with my issue with him was, is that what he said was, is that he picked him based on his World Cup experience. I won in World one World Cup. Now, yeah, CV just turned around and says to me, "I think Danny Hughes is better than you, so I'm picking him." I'd have had more respect for him, and I'd have says, "I disagree with you, What's but that? fair enough." You understand mm. now why I got so pissed off? I got pissed off at how he went about it and how he said, um, I'm not picking you because Danny Hughes got more experience. Whether they thought that or no, that's the most bullshit argument I've ever heard. Yeah, it's a silly comment. Isn't yeah, it? it's a silly comment. So, but it's either yeah, just yeah. turned around and said, no, he turned around and said this later. He turned around and said later, I just picked Danny Hughes because Danny Hughes is better than you. No, I was like, but that's not what you said. Like, you said yeah. this. So if you're going mm. to say something, stick by at least what you say. So that's what got up my nose. No, no, no getting picked. No getting picked because you, literally you could have split a hair between four or five centre-backs in there. I'm sure, Joe, I'm sure you can confirm that. Uh, I would agree with you. You could have split Yeah, but at the same, at the same point, you know, you know, people hard, are, Andy. Actually. You know how people are. The guy may have been intimidated by You really don't know. You have an aura. No, have a fucking have a set of balls on you. Yeah, but then I think people just like I think people just respect like the straightforward. Like I had a similar thing because I was thinking about playing in the Xbox Island team this year. I saw everybody write their applications down, and everyone got likes, this, that, the other from the manager. I put mine down, nothing, no reply, Mm. nothing. So I messaged him. I was like, "What's your problem?" No reply. So so, so then he actually asked me to try on the thread. I was like, "Do you know what, mate? I'll leave it." That on your PlayStation. Nah, this was on Xbox. I was gonna come, I was gonna play on the Xbox one, but then like it's just I think Andy's really saying it's like it's just how you talk to people or like how you just communicate stuff. Because no, I just expect to be the wrong way, like. I just expect to be spoken to the way I would speak to somebody. Because if it was yeah, me exactly. was picking and it was exactly. between and it was between me say it was between like because obviously you pick yourself so so for example Piki takes Tiki is going to pick his cell on the team so he's so whatever position he's in everybody else in that position is fucked right. So if I'm a Scotland manager and I'm picking. Right, my logical pick is going to be Joe. So everybody else is obviously at a, an instant disadvantage, right? Because I'm going to pick who I think that I'm going to partner with the best, right? But I'm going to give everybody a fair crack of the whip. So if I don't pick Joe, I'm going to say to Joe on the basis of the try, I'm going to say, look, Joe, I think I combined with this guy better than I did with you. Obviously, like, I think Joe's a good player, but I just think I got, I got better with this guy. Like, I just think this would be a better partnership. I just there's, there's many things and ways you could put it rather than the way you put it. That that was my main thing. But I'm more straightforward. I would just say to a guy, "You are shite in your trial. You're not getting fucking yeah. picked." <laughs> I respect that more too. Yeah. See the thing is, see you saying that. See looking at the, the manager where he plays in attacking, attacking position. His co-manager plays in attacking position. I think it. Not scared off might not be right, but it put off a lot of the big names that can play in the attacking positions. Because I think, well, what's the point? There's already yeah, two positions already already gone. Mm-hmm. What's the point? I mean, it comes down to weak mentality as well, though, because you know, Joe, as well, a lot of these international managers will put up their international manager thread saying, oh, I've just been selected, thanks, this is my thread. And a lot of people that have never even fucking spoke a, like a word to will go up to them and immediately dick ride them to try and get the position locked down oh, yes. again. That's oh, just yes. happens. That's just how it goes. That's that's just how it goes, man. Like Who's I've the never other s- squad you wanted to bring up was uh, Northern, Northern Ireland. Ireland. No- yeah, Northern that's, Ireland. Over that's Ireland. a fucking tasty squad, by the way. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, that's they're my they're my dark horse. They're, to, they're to not, that's not even a dark horse squad. That's better than England squad and better than Scotland squad. <laughs> but will they win it though, mate? That way, mate. Well, <laughs> um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, the Welsh aren't that bad either. Look, I don't know you yeah, the Welsh are the, the French. Welsh look you can't ever rule out the French either. The ones you've got to watch is the French team, man. Like, wow. Mm. you just you got to watch. Like, one, from one day, it's going to click because they've got too many good players to not be winning these World Cups. Like, they, they're throughout 1 to 11. Actually, 1 to about 15 is very, very good, man. Where is yeah. the Welsh squad? So. You've got to pass it twice. Far, far right. Far right. Middle. Far right. And then, uh, I've got the Welsh squad now. 
Oh, the Wales squad you're looking for. Yeah, again, Wales, you've got names and there, you've got new guys coming in there to the fold as well. It's just an interesting, it's an interesting bunch, really. And then I think that, that, the one, and mostly, again, the fight, I hate saying the fucking, the term, a lot of them have got VFL history type thing. So, like, that Hanbury guy has won, like, six Ballon d'Ors back in the day in Keeper, so he'll be strong if he plays goal. Uh, Dags has had a fucking great like year, pretty much a centre back. There's a lot of good good names in there. Phoenix Josh, Phoenix Cheeky, like all these guys. These they'll ball out. Well, based on the squads, I've just that seen that I would, that I, would, that I would go for a, a if they can avoid each other. France Northern Ireland final, one of the two winning it. Yeah, I would say it's a I'd say it's a fair shout. I'd say that, of course there's still teams to come in like the the Italians, the Dutch. The Dutch are always tricky in these World Cups. Our oh, squad as well. Rest yeah, of the world is waiting one. Is the German team similar to last one? Uh, the German team is not Zed. It is the guy that plays in the World Series. They're not Potty guy because he asked if he could come in. So he's there. Uh, he's got. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're there. there. Bottom left. Yeah, he's got guys like uh, Ev Ibrahimovic in there. Torres ninety four. Zed. They're all there. Is Razak in that plan again? Uh, I am not. Uh, I've just put it off. No, he's not on the list. Not on the list. That'll be an interesting team. Potty, Boateng, Shumi, Iber, Roli, Uwe, Uwe, I can't say that name. Uwe. We'll sort of call him Ua, Mr. U, Torres, Yancey, Zed, Nico, not Navas, not today, Fuck Freaks, MTE7, oh, not Dummy and not Carlos. You know? uh, How many guys in that Germany team has got an X at the end of them? They all have a kiss at the German team, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> well pointed out, Dylan. Fucking hell, man. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> Um, but no, they, they, I tell you who, who who could potentially be an absolutely unreal squad and just literally obliterate this whole tournament, depending on who they get, the Italians. Because they are playing, yeah. they've got two teams in there playing fucking some top tier stuff, man. Like two of the hardest teams you'll play. Um, they're absolutely brick solid to break down and they're really good in the ball. Like um, basically the old um, hypnotise, which they're called Emkers now or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and then um, Empoli Empoli are just one of the teams like, if you go a goal down against them you just don't get back in the game you literally don't get back in the game they're such mm-hmm. a pain in the ass to play against um, mm-hmm. and, and obviously um, because they just grind the game more than anybody else they play 11's constant yeah, but they play from like 9 to 1 1 in the morning that's their yeah. normal sort of right. sessions mate. Empoli it's Esports is on lest we forget and Fridays yeah. and Saturdays <laughs> and fucking like they're just constantly on constantly you go to the uh, you go to the tables tab on that dock Andy you can see the groups as well where everyone's in with each other no way. Because uh, Scotland and France are in the same group, so oh, I'm interested for, for that. Oh, fuck's sake. We've got some France. Did you not know that? Did you not know the groups yet? Oh, you're getting the group. Oh. Just, that, this is the first time I've really seen the squad. Again, again, <laughs> France and Northern Ireland and Scotland. The group D is the group of death, mate. That's D for death. Jesus That's horrific. Christ, man. That's well, at least you'll be calling, mate. <laughs> I'll be coming to take a I'll be on the train this Sunday, this Saturday, Sunday, I think. <laughs> uh, you'll be on the media, eh? <laughs> I'm retired for the international scene, mate. Uh, tired. No, I don't know. Uh, I think I think everything else is. I think um, the three, like the, 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 what I can see, the, the the two big kind of juicy squads is Northern Ireland and France, and then you see whatever Italy brings in. But I think everybody else is like, for what I can see, is looks quite close. Yeah, one squad as well, one squad that's it's always the same core of players in every tournament. They get better and better and better. They get closer. The to USA. The USA. Yeah. Every tournament, they get better and better, and they get because they play together that much. Oh yeah, they they they've they, they, they had a, a Discord where all the core players are in it together for like the last like two three years. Like they always call up the same names, the same group. And they made it to two finals and said one final they lost was a golden goal bundle off of the keeper's arse. So they're eventually going to get close as well. Yeah, they're getting closer. Um, somebody's well, you, just you, asked... You could potentially um, actually branch... Whoever's in charge of America, if they branched out to certain sort of certain places where the better USA players will actually play, there is some absolutely unreal American players. I, I haven't seen them play on here yet, but like they used to play years ago and then buy it. Fuck me, man. They'd give anyone Do you remember how good Streets Yeah, yeah. It, uh, if, you go, if you go to, if you go to the, uh, the overall all-time records and then you find USA, wherever it is, you'll see that Streets actually has caps on it. Streets and, and Pony and that lot, you played one tournament on it and they finished third and then they never played again. Very good. 
Um, it will be uh, Aaron when is the World Cup kick off Friday night this Friday yep. Yep. so this it's Friday, Friday night on Friday night I'll be doing early. I'll be doing commentary <laughs> on the channel so I think Aaron are you playing in it or are you commentating I have, I have no idea on the fucking team sheet yet mate if I'm not picked to play then I'll definitely be with you mate, well, I'm definitely going to be joined by um, Jammin uh, it'll be me Jammin uh, Foxy and I think Kieran um, I'll be commentating and potentially Aaron and potentially Joe when he gets grouped. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I'm or not. Scotland don't generally concede many goals, and I'm no, looking at that squad to know the don't. back line, and especially if it's. Well, I'm, I'm biased, but obviously I've got Shelling and Phoenix, but Shelling would be uh, the number what, one. What time is kickoff at? What time is it good? Uh, time? The three group games on Friday, 8, 8.30 and 9. Four group games happen on the right, Friday, okay. then it's a knockout on Saturday, Sunday. So it kicks that. So what I'll probably do is be live like at, at a half eight um, with a World Cup build up and stuff like that. We'll just be talking shit and I'll be sitting drinking beer. So Friday's sure to be carnage. Um, and then what's, what's, so what's Saturday's format um, uh, sat, so Saturday so all the groups get done on Friday Saturday we have the uh, quarterfinals and the semifinals and then Sunday we have the final but every day each day the seeding games so even if you get grouped in this we have an international ranking system and a table so like for example say USA and Hungary get grouped they'll still have games on Saturday and Sunday so there's games for all nations across all three days but we do on the Saturday we have the semi-final and sorry we have the quarter-final and the semi-final all happening at once and then on Sunday we have like the third place playoff happen before the final and then basically once all the seeding games are finished everyone can pull in and watch the the grand final which I think is at like 9 o'clock nice, so Nice. Nine o'clock is like the final fucking kickoff of the World Cup. The final. That should be good. Um, that should be good. I got somebody asked me in chat. I think it was Neff asked me why did I never apply for Scotland manager. I think it'd be hell of a hypocritical of me to apply on the basis that I said I was never going to apply for a to trial. So if I'm not going to apply to trial, I'm not going to apply to be manager. I think that's quite hypocritical. So until I put my name down to trials, I'll never put my name down to actually run it. Um, and then obviously I would need to be picked here on it as well. Um, and 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 Aaron's kind of thing to do is to find um, gems to run it rather than establish names. So uh, well, not all the, time, all the time, man. But all the, time. the way that I do it is I always run two World Cups a year, and I always kind of give this first one to like. I, I it depends. I have to give this first one to like people that will never get a chance, or the summer one to people that never get a chance. So more than likely in the summer, like the one that ends FIFA 20 for the year, which will be after the final season on 20, which is August. It will more than likely I'll be picking just straight names off the list and have just a real big fucking bash to send off 20. That's the way I'll probably end up looking at it. Hmm. So, What do you yeah. think, we spoke, because like, there have been a few people asking, but what do you think of a proper serious 11 v 11 World Cup? I mean, it'd be great, yeah. I can see no fucking no problem with it at all. Right, right, so, so I mean, like the elevens teams, like well, me and Joel go about and pick the managers. You know what I mean for like VFL World Cup, elevens World Cup. Uh, I don't yeah, know what you like, call it. I, I like the thing with it is that to be completely honest, like it reduces my workload. Like the whole thing with like having a like if I do this whole thing in the summer, I say it's going to be a super serious, the best of the best in the summer. The ke the only concern I have ever with that is that. If people are going to fucking cheat in your fucking drafts to win a pat on the back, Andy, people are going to be fucking whipping out Photoshop and everything to fucking fake birth certificates, mate. It's exactly what's going to be happening. So it's a case where I would need to fucking prep for that. Right, we've done it before. Let's go. We've done the whole passport thing before as well with FPC because it it got ridiculous, man. You had like like, an Irish guy in Ireland. Yeah, Yeah, a little bit. I might have took advantage of some of the players that didn't get picked for England. And, uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> next minute, I've got the best team on the entire game we've ever put together. I didn't even want to pick myself, fuck's sake. That's how good the you team was, actually, because right? you ended up manager, didn't you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I did the same, to be fair. Man. I mean, with Scotland, I had, like, 70 unity in there. Like, so... But you think yeah. at one stage, I had Irons in Cam, I had Kyle the Great, I had fucking Malky, I had Swift, uh, Swifty, fucking, I had everybody, man. Fuck sake, I'm just there in DM and that, just trying not to fuck up too much. Yeah. Like fucking, <laughs> Jack, like Swifty, like Swifty's picture was a 40 year old guy with a tar. <laughs> <laughs> On a passport, Swifty, like Swifty. <laughs> Oh, no, 
Trust me, we've had some fucking absolute belters, mate. Honestly, only until you're fucking doing the check-in like I'm doing, do you hear some of the finest reasons for qualification of a fucking nation? Honest, though, gringo, the, the best one ever has got to be that picture Mark Dev sent him. Oh, Mark Dev, the, the no, from mate, mate, Mark Dev's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Mark Dev's just a clown. Mark. There was another one as well. Someone literally had, uh, it's still in general discussion, it gets bumped every World Cup, and it's a thread from 2015. And it's called something like some fine international proof here, guys. And it is the worst yeah. Photoshop job you've ever seen in your fucking life. And it's just still laughing at this fucking day. Well, uh, I don't think anything I've ever seen for any excuse or any reason ever compares to the, the graphic that was done for the oh, fuck Cup of Nations. It was literally please, please find that for Friday. Please uh, find uh, it. There's no way I'm going to find that, but it's literally <laughs> the worst graphic that I have ever seen in my life that's, man, that's the was... funniest thing I've ever seen on clubs that is the <laughs> best thing ever like, fuck's sake man. Was, do you want to shout that who was the artist who did the graphics for that Andy this poster he was very good at graphics but this yeah. what, what actually happened is Chrissy says to him can you get everybody's flags like kind of blown up out of a cup right <laughs> But what he did is he went on and see all the see like the kind of the, 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 the wee teeny gif she get the flags fluttering. He them, but they were that they were teeny, and they were just spotted all over the place. They were like a fucking mess, man. It was a complete and utter mess. So it was, man. It was, I, I wish I still, I wish I kept it because it was like the worst graphic I've ever seen for any That's site. Hilarious. I mean any site, and I've been on websites since 1999 when graphics were like fucking shite. And that's yeah. still the worst graphic I've ever seen. It's literally just a, it's literally just a 2D image of a cup with like random flags just like, hanging out. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty terrible. sure there were a few that weren't even in the cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally hideous, man. It was so bad, man. Andy. Uh, he's got yeah. like a Zimbabwe flag going on. Like <laughs> putting the effectuals. Ah, uh, the effectuals. No, it shows oh, the effectuals. Uh, I'm going to go straight to Group D because, again, I'm Scottish by his get up. But looking at the fixtures, we get Poland first. Gear's a good start. We don't win oh. that game, and then we uh, seriously could be back in trouble. We oh, win we that game. It, it puts us in a good stead for the French and the Irish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you come out of that group with five points, Joe. You you beat Poland, and then you just draw and draw. Yeah, You've got to beat Poland. Man. It's still skin and dump it. Yeah, Dilskin Dom, 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 but Dom's gonna see if he looks at, if he goes back to the roster. Our weakest point in Scotland, in my opinion, is probably in DM. It's probably in the middle of the pitch, and we're seriously going to need Dylan. I hope you bring the biggest rocks out your boat, mate, because everyone here is <laughs> jumping in it. But at least you know he'll control the whole attack, man. You know, like... and they can out on Saturday, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Dylan's no the wee sweaty Dylan he used to be Dylan's already getting pushed and all that like he's not giving a fuck anymore that man's got that, that man's got more medals in his pocket than fucking Ben Johnson <laughs> <laughs> I've only just noticed the final group game for Scotland is fucking Northern Ireland that's yeah. nuts that I didn't even know that that's Good. that's that's one I'd love to go into and commentary in the Ryan game chat I would love that. <laughs> and he sat commentary. there half fucking pissed out of his mind laughing at the time Scotland conceded to Northern Ireland. Uh, just hate to see that. Fucking starting up, flinging, singing, flowing. Yeah, Daddy Hughes wouldn't have, <laughs> wouldn't have fucking stopped that. Yeah, fuck off. Like Club like, like, the Wheelstone Raider. Right, I'm, I'm, right, listen, I'm going to, uh, Chrissy and Gian, I'm going to um, message you about coming back on because I want to have a proper talk about like actual FIFA, the engine, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the oh, stuff because yeah. we, 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 I, I took us off it because I wanted to get into this World Cup stuff um, but I definitely think this is like that's a conversation we can get right into and it's one that we can also as well like take stuff for the chat like people asking questions and the five years can just delve right into like stuff with EA and stuff like because like, there's been conversations that we've all had um, with various people through the years um, so I, I definitely oh, yes. want to do something with that. We've got we've, we've actually got a format schedule for the for the podcast. So we'll look at dates. Um, I'll get back to you with dates, and and we might like maybe jig things about a bit. Um, and try and get you back on. But I definitely think it's been a good mix tonight, a good balance. Um, yeah, that's fun, man. So I'm going to wrap up. Um, yeah. I'm going to ask um if if any you get any kind of last words or you want to say cheerio or whatever. Um, then jump in. Uh, I'll say uh you know. 
cheers JR for hopping in, and there's also Chris here. That JR just fucking hopped in like, like out of fucking nowhere and just to have his, have his insight. In. And so Chrissy giving us all a history lesson back in the day is, is wonderful. So I, I'd said to Andy before on other podcasts, like, I love hearing about the scene like, back like eight, nine years ago. It's interesting as shit to me. I have no idea why it just is. Um, and yeah, you know, cheers to Andy for getting us on again and, and letting us do it. And uh, of course, Joe for being Joe. And, uh, you know, help me slide along with the World Cup stuff for the, the VFL World Cup. Since, you know, if not, I'd be doing that on my own. So, yeah, thanks, boys. Sure. No worries. Just thanks to JR and Chrissy coming in. Cheers to everybody in the chat. Keeping it going. Coming in. Day for you, boys. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I, would add, have... I, I, I would just add one thing. Do you not find it actually quite kind of funny that we've got the most toxic community in the whole world? Dysfunctional as hell. But we're literally the only community that actually comes together and like makes sort of changes to the game. Like, yeah. Everybody else just fucking just gets on with it, scared of the shadows, certain admins. You know, like it's just, it's actually quite funny, man. I'd like to get into that a little bit more. It's hard. Hard. It's, you, you sound like you're about to make one of those Oscar speeches. <laughs> I, I, I do know, Frank. I, I do know, Frank. I do know. Five years ago, I tear with you, Ajay. I was once, five. once you're over on PS4, you realise like the fucking like, it's, it's fucking shit, man. <laughs> I, 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 I could never have seen us five sitting in a party five years ago. Let's put it that way. Uh, no, hey, don't worry, worry JR. Me. March 16th, log it in the diary, mate. Log it in the diary. We'll talk about PS4. Right, boys, I'm going to, I'm going to let Skedado at the call, get my, I'm going to go and jump into a Unity session now. Um, and then after that, I'll probably be doing drafts if any are floating about. Um, but thanks for uh, thanks to you for coming in last minute. I know I did ask you ages ago. You said you couldn't do it, and then you jumped in at the in the end. So I really appreciate that, mate. Uh, Chrissy, uh, thanks for coming in as well, mate. Um, I've had a lot of conversation with you over the years, and, and your opinion never changes. Always consistent. Always a very thoughtful guy. A lot of good ideas in the scene. And obviously to my two residents, Joe and Gringo, thanks very much for for being here with me every single week. Um, and um, we'll we'll see you again. Next, I believe is the next one next Monday scheduled. Is it? Uh, 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 episode four. Um, yeah, the seventeenth. So yeah, that's next that's Monday. Next I saw the episode yeah. four is next Monday. Um, maybe yeah, we get you on there. Um, we've got the World Cup stuff and that, and then we'll talk about about that. But I think you content wise, we could definitely fun. bring you to. And if he's wanted today next Monday. Um, I think it would be quite interesting to go over like the whole EA thing and like clubs in general. It would be a good discussion. Um, but anyway, I'll contact you and you can let me know and I shall bid you for adios. Later, guys. Thanks for having me.